We've already talked about your shots, listing out all of your shots. We've talked about getting your ideas, getting your goals, doing the pitch to really make it easy to understand what your goal is. Now we're going more into detail to actually visualize, not just a shot list, not just a script, but actually to make some pictures. And that's called the storyboard. And you've probably seen storyboards before. They're very common. They look something like this, where you have a series of pictures. Those pictures are very similar to your shot list, your list of shots, because each shot is basically a frame and you can draw a little picture in there. So a storyboard is a great way for you to go ahead and begin to visualize your video, even if the video is very, very short. And in fact, if it's short, you're probably gonna have many short shots. So it's very important to go ahead and storyboard it. Remember, the planning is the key point. You don't plan, then nothing's gonna work. So the more you plan, the more excited you get, the more time you save, the less you have burnout, you get tired. Storyboards can be fun, especially working with your group. You can work with all your people to make the storyboard. So let's look at some of my students' storyboard works from before, which are really interesting, and they get very excited about making them. So this is the same project we were working on before. We have our shot list, and here's a bit of a storyboard. Let me zoom that in a bit. Now this was the video where we were going to have freshmen entering the university and they were going to learn how to use the dormitory refrigerator to keep their food in to stay more healthy. That was the pitch, remember that? So if we look at that carefully here, we've got the storyboard beginning with a close-up of a student's uniform and a student's number there. And you can see we have a very kind of outline, vague outline, which is okay, and then a little bit of text, which is kind of a follow-on from the shot list. And then we have a, a kind of pull back on our shots, wider and wider. We go from an extreme close-up all the way to a medium shot and then a long shot. So right here, I think it's really a great example of how this storyboard right away helps give us a feeling of what's happening. You can see that the camera's in close, pulls back, pulls back more. What a great idea, and I think this has really got the group excited to really participate, to work together. The art doesn't have to be great. The art can be very basic. You can use computer programs, but you know what? It's just as easy to grab a pencil and go ahead and draw it yourself. Very basic. And so we have a series of shots here, and we have reaction shots, and then we have a shot of the food, so this is the middle of the story, and then we have the refrigerator doing all the tasks, we have a clock involved here, and we have the student in long shot coming around. So there you go, you get a really nice feeling of the structure, and I like the use of those arrows there, showing the direction of action. So the camera's here, and the actor, the town, is going around that way. It's really a wonderful approach that this group had. I get kind of interested just watching the storyboard. Okay, so we have the whole film done out right until the end. And I love the ending here. Here the hero points directly at the camera and this hero has a statement saying, you can also have your perfect college life. So isn't that wonderful? So we had a hero at the beginning, we have a hero at the end. That's one of our key points for making a story. We have a process, something happens. We have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in the middle, something goes on. And in this case, because the pitch, the goal, of this video was to train freshmen in the female dormitories how to prepare or save their lunch in the refrigerator. Because that task has steps, the middle of this video is going through those steps. Here's what you do, one, two, three, training you. The beginning and the end is a way to keep it interesting, and I think they've done a good job at that. We'll look at the finished product in another lesson. Let's go ahead and jump back here look at our other group. Now remember this group was a little bit more confused, not super clear. They were going to have a video about avoiding a building. So here's their storyboard. And they have some graphics on there, some text on their storyboard, a long shot of a building, and then a close-up of a scary face, close-up of feet, 
So we can see right here from the beginning, they're using a kind of style. Now, where did they get that style from? Remember, genre, genre. They said that their video is going to be a training video. That's the genre, but inside that genre, they're gonna have a subgenre. They're going to use horror or scary movies to use that kind of method. So they probably went and watched some scary videos and they said, hey, what did those do? How did they do that? And one way they do that is this extreme close-up. Close-up of the feet, close-up of a face, a scary face, close-up of a shadow. And that helps them to create that kind of scary feeling. And then we have some close-ups of a hand, pressing an elevator button. And I love these drawings, right? I love these. These guys did not have any talent for drawing, but you know what? It doesn't matter to have talent for the drawing. It makes the picture clear. It helps us understand what we're trying to do, and that's all that matters. You know, that's all that counts. So they did a pretty good job on their storyboard getting things ready. We'll watch their video also later. So storyboards. Storyboards can be great fun, and it really helps your group, your team, to get motivated to work together, and you begin to visualize it. It's really wonderful fun. It's based on your shot list, so you will kind of like script, you know, pitch, script, shot list, storyboard. These are all kind of making the same thing more and more detailed. And then on the day of your shooting, you go out and you can execute, save time, and really get an effective product. If you don't storyboard, let me emphasize this, if you don't storyboard, you will regret it because you, you won't know what shot to take. And you're gonna sit around thinking, should I stand here, should I go there, should the camera be here? And it's already very hard because you're running out of time, the sun is going down, or there's too much traffic, making noise, all those problems. You don't need to worry about what am I trying to shoot. The great thing about a storyboard is you can have a kind of close-up, for example, but you get to this site and you find out it's too noisy or it's too dark, and then what? You can go to another location but still use the same storyboard. So storyboards are great. All right, let's go to the hardware tape. Okay, here we are at the hardware table. What's our hardware going to be today? Well, a couple things that you're gonna be using no matter what. Cables or wires, and batteries. This seems like a really silly topic, doesn't it? Everybody knows about batteries, right? Well, let's think about all the things we've looked at on the hardware table. We've looked at transmitters, we've looked at portable mixers, we've looked at cameras. All of these things need battery power. And many of the devices you'll be using can just use normal batteries, like this transmitter here, and use a battery like this. So, What's a key point to avoid problems? Remember, the whole point of this course is how not to make a mistake. Well, one thing you probably wanna do is you wanna buy a big box of batteries before you go out on your shoot. So you go someplace, the supermarket, department store, and you buy them. There's only one battery I recommend, and that would be Duracell batteries. They last longer in storage, and they run down at the end they run down slower they don't just die all of a sudden in the middle they're very very good quality you can buy a whole box of these at costco and keep that box in your pack and you go out if there's any question is the battery low you just change the battery you don't even think about it you don't need to check it in detail so that's very important of course lots of people like to use rechargeable batteries and rechargeable batteries what do we think of rechargeable batteries well rechargeable are okay course, good for the environment, but they're terrible for going out and making a shoot. The Duracell are going to be strong all the time. The rechargeable, they may be strong at the very beginning of their charge, but they lose power very quickly and become weak. That's very bad for your video equipment. That's not going to help you make a good shoot. Okay, we also have 9 volt batteries. Lots of equipment actually uses 9 volt. We have a couple transmitters for microphones also the portable mixer uses 9 volt 9 volt of course is much more powerful the only thing I have to say about 9 volt is be very careful of the 9 volt I've been out shooting video before and I've had people put these in their pocket you put that in your pocket and if this touches your keys or money 
that'll short out and very soon somebody's gonna be screaming and yelling that their pants are on fire. Whoa, it's so hot! Because that baby will get hot in just a few seconds. That'll get super hot. And eventually it'll burn up, I guess. Okay, the next thing is cables and wires. Very practical, right? As you can see here, we have a nice, long microphone wire. And we've talked about the microphones, and I just love using these wires. They're very reliable compared to the transmitters because the transmitters can get interference or run out of power. The cable never runs out of power because it doesn't have a battery, right? So these cables are wonderful. Now when you get on site, of course, what you do is you unwind your, your cable like this. But what happens a lot of times is when you're ready to leave, people hurry up and grab the wires and they pull it all together and it's a mess. And the next time you go out, what happens? The wire's all in a big knot. So there's two things I want to emphasize about your cables. Even if the cable is a short cable like this, even if the cable is just a few AV cables like this, you need to pay attention to your cables. Now, of course, inside this cable, we, got, we have three smaller cables, right? Because we have the three for the XLR jack. When you feel the cable, it's, it's kind of thick. It's a thick cable. Now, usually what people do is they go ahead and they start winding the cable up, up, up like that. Just keep winding it. Let me focus that a little bit for us. There you go. And they just go ahead and they wind it up. Now this is not the right way. Because if you do this, that wire inside is going to twist tighter and tighter. And eventually it's going to break. Because every time you do this, it's, look at that right there, you can see. It's twisting in a very weird kind of way. It's very hard. And people just bunch it together and throw it in the back. Very, very bad idea. How should we approach winding up our cables? Well, what we want to do is we want to be very gentle with our cables so they last longer and they don't give us trouble in the middle of the shoot. Let me show you how to wind the cable so it doesn't get twisted. So you go ahead and you wind it one time, just like that. But then the next time you grab it from the other side and twist it in. This way the wire will untwist itself. Here we have a twist from the first time we wound it up. And you go ahead and you get the size about right. And then you go ahead and wind up the next time. And you'll see the wire will begin to untwist itself. And then you do the next one. And then you bring one up. And then you see that? We've got to get rid of that. So we want to untwist our wire and then turn it that way. And then untwist it, untwist it so it's flat. Okay, one more time. First of all, we need to get this wire all untwisted to start with. So uh, let me go pull through this whole wire here. It's a nice long cable for audio, perfect for audio. You want to be careful, don't push any energy into there because you'll break the wire inside the cable. So slowly just let that go through. And finally, I'm getting to the end. And yes, I've gotten all the kinks and bumps out. Perfect. Okay. So this is our XLR cable. And again, what am I going to do? I'm going to turn it one time. And then the next time, I'm going to turn my hand inside out and then bring it up like this. And then bring the next part up and then turn my hand in and bring the inside out. And you see what it's doing? is it's going one way one time and another way the next time. And that way you'll keep your wires nice and safe. Even for your small wires like your little tiny earphones which we said you shouldn't use but if you have them or if you have headphones and you've got little tiny wires the best thing you can probably do is to buy little plastic boxes to keep them in or to get these little kind of tabs that can loop, up, loop around and hold them all together and then put them into your box or your bag. All right, that's very basic advice, but boy, that'll save you a lot of trouble on your shoot. So good luck on your shooting and keeping your batteries charged and your cables safe.